Hello everyone, or anyone, if anyone is watching these, or going to watch these. There are a bunch of great Dark Souls lore series out there already. Quilags and Epic Name Bros, for example. But I disagreed with specific and certain points and became inspired to make my own lore series. The first realization that I had was that I wanted to keep my part short, as to keep interest hopefully up. I decided that the best place to begin would be the actual beginning, including my valid interpretation of the main story. I want to make it clear that I believe, like some, that Dark Souls is, or was, supposed to be a prequel to Demon Souls. I know it technically, and legally, cannot be, but from the information I've gathered, my guess is that this changed, or at least stopped being advertised, when Sony gave their legal threatening. But never mind that. As the series goes on, I'll be sure to explain why I think Dark Souls is a specific prequel. Now, in the opening movie, we are shown a world that is unformed, shrouded in fog. However, I believe this only applies to the world below the arched tree tops. By my rationalization, there has always been life above the trees, the same as there is in present game day. The difference is that instead of giant castle cities and residencies built into mountainsides, the world above is much more of a chaotic struggle for survival. Think medieval Europe, I suppose. Some countries are even advanced enough to have sorcery and miracles, however. I point to the Isolith Catalyst description for proof of this, in which it reads, Catalyst of the Witch of Isolith of long ago, when her daughters were still flame witches, before they were engulfed by the Chaos Flame, before the birth of Pyromancy, when their wands were mediums for sorcery, but knowledge of this flame sorcery has long since vanished. Now, of course, this immediately could bring up the argument that Pyromancy came about after the storyline of the game began, and therefore there's no telling when the sorcery with the witches took place. But to further explain, you can look up the Demon's Catalyst, which states, The Demon Fire Sage was the first demon, and the last master of the original fire arts. Before the Witch of Isolith was engulfed by chaos, creating Pyromancy. It was definitely after the world became known as Lordran that Pyromancy was created, and we see the Isolith family using their wands quite spelt aggressively in the opening movie, casting fire enough to burn the world down. So, sorcery existed and was in use before lords were formed before the opening movie takes place. move on to dragons. They lived in relative peace below the medieval type chaos. It could also be that while the dragons lived for eons below, the world above evolved and eventually humans being humans came into being. Excuse me. The problem with this setup is that the people, humans, began to die. When they died, they sprung into a hollow life in a flame world, what I believe to be pre isolith what we are shown in the prologue video with an even greater sense of suffering. This is when the most fantastical part takes place of all the crazy stuff that happens in this game. In the flames surrounding the dead were the souls of lords, or gods, waiting to be snatched for use. I'll explain soon why these souls would be waiting, but first I do want to be clear that the lord's souls that are found are to be considered godly. The description of the Black Eye Orb is proof enough of this. It says, The Black Eye keeps constant watch on the city of the gods, Anorlando. Who lives in Anorlando? Gwyn and his folk. I plan on making separate vids for the big bosses, but I need to discuss Nito for just a moment. The game states that he is the first of the dead, and by dead I believe they mean exactly what I've stated. What I think is more likely is that he was not the first person to die, but rather the first person to attain a large soul. It's unclear whether he was given the one he has on purpose, to become the Grave Lord, or per perhaps it was the only soul he could use. There's also a chance that in his haste to take hold of a soul first, he got what was a powerful one, but not the most powerful. It could have been simply that his being was meant to be, and could only take hold of, the Gravelord soul. A destiny of sorts, if you will.
I'm going to stop there in the interest of time, but I really do hope that people continue to check out my soon-to-be-uploaded vids. Thanks to all those who have watched, and please feel free to leave comments, questions, and complaints. I'll take them all.